These are some very practical tips for packing and traveling with camera gear. Before you pack your camera bag, which we know is an incredibly stressful thing to do because you want to bring way more than you need to bring, get everything out. Don't start packing it, put it on a table, put it on the floor and visualize everything that is going into that bag. For a couple of reasons, this is a really good practice to get into. Number one, it lets you see everything. Is that all gonna fit inside that bag? You can probably tell pretty fast or not if it is going to or not. But also, it lets you see exactly what you're bringing. Every little tiny accessory, every piece of equipment and gear because we often overpack. I do it, I know you're gonna be likely doing it too. When you see everything out there, you can look at it and go, mm, probably don't need that. It's just a really good way of doing it, opposed to everything being in your bag, something's buried under something else. If you can scrap a little bit of weight or make some extra space, you're gonna be happier. All-in-one lenses just make sense over prime lenses. And I know you might be a massive prime lens fan, I am as well, but when you're traveling, all-in-one lenses just make more sense. And there's some really great ones out there now, so there really isn't any excuse to not like them. You're going to need multiple prime lenses, which means more weight, more space to do exactly the same job as what an all-in-one lens or a zoom lens is going to be able to do. If you're in a faster paced environment, you're moving around from location to location quickly and traveling, you also have to change those lenses out if you're using prime lenses. In terms of all-in-one lenses, you've got things like the Sony 20 to 70 f4, which gives you a bit more space on the wider end compared to like your typical 24 to 70, at the caveat of it's only f4 versus f2.8. The 24 to 105 from Sony, again, f4, it's a little bit of an older lens now, a little bit softer. Autofocus isn't quite as good as some of the newer, more updated lenses, but you get that 24 to 105 range, which for some people is probably gonna be the only lens you may need to bring. The 1635 is always gonna be a stable for a lot of people to get things on that wide end for landscape, for architecture. If you're shooting vlog style content, that is definitely one that you're probably always gonna to wanna to bring with you. I think most people when they travel are bringing something like a 16 to 35. 20 to 70 isn't gonna get you that 16 reach, but also you have now the 17 to 50 F4 from Tamron. So that's something else to consider there. Then of course you have things like the 24 to 70, which is always gonna be a staple lens for people to bring as well. To get like the 24 to 70 reach, you need at least three prime lenses. To get a 20 to 70, you're looking at at least three prime lenses. The 24 to 105 is three, probably four prime lenses. So you can quickly see how bringing zoom lenses, all-in-one lenses, just make more sense for travel. Look at your itinerary. Look at what your plan is for where you're going, where you're traveling to. What are you gonna be doing when you're there? Are you just gonna be doing street photography in New York City? you may not need the 7200. Yes, there is ways that you can creatively use the 7200 in those kinds of environments, but generally speaking, for street photography, you're not gonna be using that. Let me tell you firsthand, you're probably not gonna be using that gimbal enough to justify its size and its weight in your bag. With the stabilization that you can do in camera now and in post, you probably don't need that gimbal. Leave it at home. I've brought mine many, many times, sacrificed other things, dealt with the weight, carrying it around or everywhere with me and just not ended up using it. At the same time, this also needs to apply to bodies. If you have multiple camera bodies, different things for different purposes, really hone in on what you're gonna be doing and which bodies make sense. As an example, are you going to Yosemite to shoot firefalls, which could be a once in a lifetime photography opportunity for you. Well, probably don't bring something that has low megapixels. Bring something that has the highest megapixels that you can possibly use, the best quality glass that you can have so you can get the sharpest, best image, means you can crop and do things after the fact and you're not gonna be wishing that you bought different gear because you don't have the right framing and you can't reframe it because you only have 12 megapixels. You see what I'm trying to say? Really make sure that you're packing based on what it is that you're doing and not just packing for a whole bunch of different scenarios that might not even happen. Be very practical with your choices and help your future self. Take off grips and cages from camera bodies. You can probably make do with just the body unless you're attaching a whole bunch of different accessories for video for whatever reason. But for photography, you may not need those grips. Just leave it as a stock body. It's gonna save you weight, space, and again, you're gonna thank yourself later. This is one I don't see people talk about very often when it comes to packing camera bags, and that's to pack the gear in a way that you're going to be using it. What I mean by this is, Pack it in there so you can get it out quickly. Don't pack that bag so tight full of stuff that there's things on top of things that you're gonna be constantly using, which means it's gonna be a real pain to take things out, to get something else, to put things back in. 
pack it how you're gonna be using it. Don't pack bodies on their own with lenses to really maximize the space. Put lenses that you're gonna be using most frequently on the bodies you're gonna be using them. So you can just take them out of the bag, use them, and then put them back in. Pack that bag exactly how you're gonna be using it. If you pack the things separate, odds are when that lens is on the body and you gotta put it back in the bag, you probably don't have a bag configurated in a way that's gonna allow you to put it back in easily and quickly. Make sure you also leave room in that bag for things that may not be used in the way that they are when it's packed. So if you do have a different lens attached to that body and you want to put it back in the bag and there's not space for it, well, that's why if you have extra room in there, you have space to be able to do that. This has happened to me too many times where I'm having to reconfigure things when I'm out and about because I just didn't leave space for it in there. Take it from me firsthand, pack the bag how you're going to be using it and leave space. You are going to overpack until you've traveled lots and get sick of all the issues and things, which is kind of why I'm making this video. You will overpack when you first start, when you first start traveling and doing things and going places. It's inevitable. Everyone does it. You're always going to have that mindset of the uh, just in case. Well, what if I need that just in case? Odds are you probably can make do without it. When you pack things just in case, you still are carrying it around. So just in case I might need it for a two minute shoot when you're on a five day hike, are you willing to carry around that extra weight just for the off chance that you may use it for two minutes? You see what I'm trying to say? Just be, be methodical with what's going in that bag and try not to overpack just in case. Now, just in case can't be confused with backups, with redundancies. If you're relying on, let's say, microphones for something, it's very important for that trip. Make sure you maybe have a backup. That's not a just in case. That is a smart choice in case something else happens. Now, if you have the luxury of a hotel or a base that you're staying at or an Airbnb, and let's say you have different itineraries for different days, different things you're doing each day, consider using something like a Y wrap or a little bag to pack lenses. Because what you can do then is you can put those in your carry-on bag, which is going to be with your person at all times. Never put things of value or fragile items like lenses and camera equipment into your check luggage, never do that. But if it's protected in a wire wrap or a lens bag, you can put that into your carry-on luggage and create space in your everyday carry bag that you're gonna be carrying around when you're traveling. So now you've got space in there, you've got extra weight that's not on your back, and you can just take those lenses out of your carry-on bag as and when you need them, put them into the everyday carry bag, and then put them back in your carry-on bag when you're traveling back home. It's something I learned to do a while back, and it makes a lot of sense. Like if you're using a lens maybe just for one day, that's where it makes sense to put it in a wire wrap or a lens bag and in your carry-on bag. It doesn't need to be in your backpack with your other camera gear for the whole time you're there if you're just using it for one part of the trip. If your bag has a top compartment, which most bags bags, nearly all bags do these days. I mean like the part that's separated from like the main section of the bag. Leave that completely free if you can. Don't pack anything in it. I find that really good for quickly putting in and out the setup that I'm using for the most part. Everyone's going to have a setup that they're mostly using and you can easily put it in and out of there without having to put your bag on the ground, unzip it, put things in, take things out. You can just pop the top, put it in there. It doesn't even need to go on the ground. You can just bring it around the shoulder, unzip, take it out, put it back in. It's also good to have that extra space because what if you're going somewhere that's a little bit cooler and you need a jacket and then you get hot and you wanna put the jacket somewhere, it can go in the top. Do not underestimate the power of a camera clip that can go onto your bag. Having your hands free can just really help you out sometimes, even if it's just eating lunch, going to grab a coffee, but also if you're in like an icier environment and you need to use your hands for balance or for grip, it can be really helpful. A strap can somewhat do the same thing, but I find with a strap when it's dangling around your neck, it kind of moves about a bit. And with the camera clip, when it's attached to that, and those things can take a ton of weight, it's just stable and there. You can lock those so it can't accidentally come out. Don't underestimate a camera clip. PGY Tech makes a great one that I'm a big fan of. Also, Peak Design does as well. Consider using a bag which is a rear open bag. This has been my preference of camera bags since I started. Nobody can attempt to pickpocket your bag and open it up while they're behind you and take things out. And believe me, people can do that very easily without you noticing. If the zipper is on your rear, on your back, it's a lot harder, probably near impossible for them to open it up and take things without you realizing. Also, a bag that opens from the back means you can put it down on the ground. If the ground's wet, the ground's dirty, muddy, whatever, open your camera gear, do what you need to do, zip it back up, put it back on your back, and you're not now getting all of that mud and snow and ice or wetness or whatever directly on your back. It also gives you the equivalent of what could be a table to set things up, to change things around. When you have it on the ground, that flat part that is on your back is the perfect thing for setting up, for rigging. You see, when bags open from the front and you put it down, 
that bit that's on your back is now on the ground. So it's getting wet or muddy or whatever. So a back open or rear open bag is way better. Now, when you're looking at bags and picking a bag, it can be very tempting to have a bag that has a million different pockets all over the bag. Believe me when I say that less pockets is better. I've been there with those bags and the appeal of having pockets and zippers and all the straps and everything like that. But what tends to happen is you put things in places and you forget where it is. And when you need to quickly find something specific that's typically smaller and in one of those pockets, you just can't find it. That's one of my favorite things about the nomadic bags is when you open them up, they are rear open. They have a big zipper there that you can see everything on the inside. Everything is in there. You can quickly see where it is, grab out what you want. They have a couple of more concealed zippers on there as well, which you can use for things like keys and wallets that you're getting to needing less frequently. But generally speaking, the stuff you're gonna be going in to grab now and then, it's in a bigger pocket. Less pockets is better. It's gonna sound silly, but treat when you travel with your camera gear, like you're going to a professional shoot. You know where you're going, you know what you're shooting first. Make sure your camera is set up to do so. Make sure your memory cards are all wiped and it's just ready to pull out your bag and start shooting photos or video. That way, when you turn up, you're not fumbling about with settings and wiping memory cards because there's not enough space because you wouldn't do that at pro shoot. You're ready to go at pro shoot when you turn up. If you need to be there at 11, you're ready to start shooting at 11, not 11.05 because you have to set everything up and then wipe your memory cards and that kind of thing. Just have it set up, ready to go, much easier, much more convenient. Your future self will thank you.